Hello and welcome to Artists Soar. This is a podcast for artists by three artists. We discuss all aspects of being artists, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The goal of each podcast is to provide solutions so artists can focus on their creativity and soar above. I'm Rachel Harshenko. Jules McCullough. Stephanie Weaver. The price of anything is the amount of life you exchange for it. That is a quote from Henry David Thoreau. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to price your artwork and art pricing in general. And this is going to be an exciting kind of eye-opening, I think, podcast. We kind of jumped around a little bit with it a couple of different times, but we're going to dive deep into it today. Um, So what are you guys working on? Julie? So I'm working on a new sea life series that entails different sea life carrying bundles of flowers <laughs> how cute is that gonna be so and my plan is for them all to be circular but i'm not sure if that'll stay that way hmm. oh that's gonna be so cute it's gonna be cute i've been working on stephanie's challenge for this month or it was last month is self-portrait hmm. so that's been a crazy one I haven't seen a draft of yours yet. No. <laughs> I know. Because I've I've done a couple and I've ta- I've chucked them. You've chucked them? I have. Oh. I'm like, no, that's not gonna work. No, oh, you gotta post them in the community and get like thoughts, opinions, ideas. Oh no, no, no. The first one was really bad. The second one I was like, uh, I kind of showed it to John and he was like, what is this? And I was like, <laughs> nope, we're gonna throw that one away. So, I don't know. I don't know how to do what anyway, is this? <laughs> I, can be more helpful that. Than, I can be more helpful than what is this? <laughs> I swear. Exactly. <laughs> Stephanie's much more helpful than that. Oh, well, that kind of gave me an idea, though. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, um, let's see. What am I working on? I am working on a couple things. For painting, I, I'm working on a new series. I haven't come up with the, the finalized name of it. I'm hopefully going to launch it in April, according to my project plan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that flies. Um, but I get to pick up the panels today and like start gessoing them and everything. I'm even picking the materials to go with the series. I'm working on that. And then um, at night, I'm revising... Uh, what we're going to talk about today, the art pricing calculator book. That so are you getting down. that linen, that Belgian linen? Yeah, we ordered um, four yards of Belgian linen off of uh, from a lady in Florida. And I ordered Gamblin's PVA to glue it to the, um, so it's like a replacement of rabbit glue. Um, I ordered their Gamblin's PVA to glue the gamble the Belgian linen to the panels. That's going to be cool. And why are you putting Belgian linen on the panels? Well, that one's going to be a separate project. But the the I have, I have wood panels made for the series that right now it's called Into the Woods. Right. Um, so that one's not going to have Belgian linen. It's just going to be gessoed right onto the wood. Okay. But I gave, I taught a class Friday on values uh-huh. and values, and I let everybody use these panels that I was given that had um, Belgian linen glued onto them. So it was very, and then I just sewed a small segment of them and everybody loved painting on that wood with the Belgian linen. And yeah, that was fun. Mm-hmm. It was, a, it was a nice little treat. And then, um, uh, you know, mom was in the class, my mom. And she, she's like, oh, I want to paint on this from now on. <laughs> so we ordered some Belgian linen. And it was her squirrel paint. moment. So yeah. Yeah. She got on the squirrel. yeah. But we found it for like $20 a yard, which is not bad. Mm-mm. And so you just paint on it like you normally would anything else. Does it give more texture or something? It gives more texture, um, but you, you still have to gesso it. 
So, okay. um, it's just a little more processing. Like you can buy Belgian linen panels, um, on like cheap Joe's or, um, Jerry's Argorama, Blick and all those. Um, but it's way more expensive than actually doing it yourself. And I've found a place here in town that will cut the boards for me. And then, you know, it's just throw on a podcast, hopefully artist story podcast, and then <laughs> <laughs> glue on the Belgian linen and then gesso like the next day. And you just kind of okay. get into it. So that sounds fun. Yeah. It's all, I'm like, interesting. That's a good little excited. project you're doing. So for our artist spotlight, today we're going to be talking about Remington Robinson. And it's RemingtonRobinson.com. Uh, we'll put the link in. And he does these little miniature paintings in the Altoids with oil. I love them. It's so much fun. And he does like regular work, some plain air, um, some values, some black and whites and um just really neat artwork very loose and um but a lot of detail surprisingly right. in those <laughs> yeah very and good yeah little very little good. altoids 10 yeah a lot of detail so anyway go check him out um he's got um uh, instagram and everything so that's always a fun thing to do Hey, before we dive into today's topic, I actually made a gift for the Artist Store listeners, and that's the Art Business Checklist and Video Guide. This checklist actually outlines what you need to do every day, week, month, quarter, and even year. The purpose of it is to hopefully make your lives a little bit easier as you're defining your art business. You can go to stephanieweaverartist.com forward slash art dash business dash checklist to grab that free guide now. Again, that's stephanieweaverartist.com forward slash art dash business dash checklist. So today, Stephanie, this is going to kind of lean a lot on you, which is kind of funny, but, and it's funny because just yesterday I had someone say, how much is your pig? Oh, you good. know, and, and I was like, uh, <laughs> I was, <laughs> I'm like, I haven't priced it yet in, in her, in my calculator yet. Um, so, um, kind of caught me off guard, but, um, I think it's safe to say that artists in general underprice our work. Yes. I there's agree. like an old school way and a new school way. And then there's the, this is what I feel it's worth. And, <laughs> you know, so how, how do we as artists, how should we view our work and price it accordingly? So... Okay, so these guys know that I'm in the process of writing a book about this. And um, that book will hopefully be available around May, June. Um, you can go to artpricingcalculator.com and get on the wait list to get it. That's artpricingcalculator.com and get on the uh, wait list to get it. But to your question, how should they price and how should they view it? Um, I do. I feel it. like we either underview what our work, and I mean, there's people at Low Mill mm -hmm. whose work is like way underpriced. Oh yeah. yes. And yeah. then yeah, that's one segment. And then there's a you know a few that you're like, whoa, that is not worth ten thousand dollars. Right. Right. Well, yeah. Uh, and that's so, part I don't of know. I mean, like, <laughs> how do you make sense out of it? There, it's just all over the board. Right. So the, kind of the way that I looked at it is I saw two different mentalities. One mentality was this is how I'm going to make a living. And the other mentality is I want to paint for the for for me. And if I get money out of it, great. The living part is a professional. The one where I want to if I get paid for it, great. That's a hobbyist. And when we look at those in low mill, um, and I've had conversations with a couple of people about this is I'm like, <laughs> um, I came in one day as an example, um, the guy across from me, I love his work. It's very traditional. It's, uh, he had some great plein air works in his window. 
And there was one that I've been keeping my eye on. I really loved it. And then he finally stuck a price on it, $150. It's a 16 by 20, $150. And then he had a sign next to it, 30% off. I I was like, I know. So I I was like, um, you know, Kevin, uh, mark that sold. I'm going to buy it right now. And uh, he's like, and he was like, okay. And he started talking to me about it. I said, no, I'm being serious. Market sold. You have it underpriced and I'm going to buy it for that price right now. And I was just kind of just like that. Matter of fact, because um, his work is really good. But his response to me was, I'm retired. I do this for fun. And so in that mentality, like, meanwhile, other people who don't know this are walking through low mill. They see his prices and then they look at my prices which I am not in this for like, as I'm not retired, this is what I do. This is my living. I've got, you know, who have car insurance. So people generally walking through don't know that. And my very just black and white world, people who are hobbyists don't know a place like this. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, it's unfairly representing the value and the hours and hours that we put into developing the skill set. And it is a skill set that you should be paid for if you want to. Right. Well, and just (laughs) even if he is a hobbyist, you still have rent you have to pay. Right. You still have insurance you have to pay. You still have materials you need to buy. You need to be at least capturing those costs plus your time right. in order, right. hobbyist or not, period. Like at a right. minimum, those are the things that you need to be capturing. A and 16 by 20 oil painting and anything is not $150. Yeah, right. I mean, he, he's losing money on that. Right. At 150 and really losing money with 30% off it. But here's the answer, another interesting thing about that. So like that weekend at that ridiculously low price, he sold uh, three pieces. And so him and his mind, he's like, OK, well, I, I made rent this month. But he lost three pieces that he didn't have any prints of. Um, there's there's I don't know how many hours went into those pieces. Yeah. But he's like, now I can make more. So. It's just a different mentality then. And then I've gotten like things on Facebook where there's, well, artists should be grateful for their ability to create. No, honey, no. This no, is not an ability. This is a skill. Right. <laughs> Anybody can learn to draw and paint and do that. It yeah. takes time and practice. It's not a natural born talent. Yeah. When somebody says to me, it's like, oh, I don't. I don't have that talent. And I said, well, do you want to? And they're like, no, not really. And I said, well, if you wanted to, you could. Exactly. (laughs) Like a musician, you don't just, it's rare that you find somebody can pick up a violin and play it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Exactly. Like Beethoven or Chopin or whatever. You have to work at it. Yeah. It's like like art too. Yeah. So uh, sorry, you kind of cut me hot there because like it's one of those things. So you have to decide before you even price, where do you want to be? If you want to be a hobbyist, great. But don't try and sell yourself and present yourself as somebody that's trying to get into galleries. If you're trying to get into galleries, you're moving towards the professional realm and you need to start pricing professionally so that your colleagues who are professional artists are being fairly represented in the amount of pay that they receive for their work. Exactly. That was a difficult statement to make. (laughs) No, but it's a true statement. No, it's true. More people would realize that because If we didn't have art, we'd be in a very black and white world, first Mm -hmm. off, because every pattern and and design that you see on something, a plate, a napkin, a roll of wrapping paper, Mm -hmm. there's an artist behind that piece Mm -hmm. that's making a living doing that. Yeah. And so why people can't realize that It is a form of work. It's a form of employment and it needs to be compensated for. Right. And I think that's something like we as artists in our social media, in our email letters, um, 
and any forward, like out facing conversations, we relay our processes. We talk about the overall, you know, inspiration, what led us to it, what materials we're using, why we're using them. And then people start to understand the overall process and it, and appreciate yeah. the value of it. And, right. And that's, that's up to us as artists to come to educate everybody else so that they know here's why we charge this. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, my, well, my website costs me, I don't know how much money a month, you know, all these different things. Yeah, um, yeah. And then when we talked with, what was it? Kat Cocolette a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. I loved one of the things that she does many things that she does actually her Emily Jeffers. Um, um, I think uh, Joanne Manji, Jen Genari, they show their process. And I know we've talked about that before. We're like, yeah. how much do you show? They show their process and that gets their collectors involved in wanting and seeing all the work, seeing all the, that, that inspiration, that, that part of them that goes into it. And they right. want to buy that because of all that value the artist puts in it. So yep. that's something we can provide. Um, I love that. Yeah. Can you I, also address the old school way of like per yeah. inch kind of thing and how that doesn't necessarily so work this is kind of, Yeah, this is kind of one of the ways that Julie and I really got to know each other. So, yeah. um, <laughs> I well, pulled her and, out of the blue. <laughs> well, and I was going to say, there was a lady when we were upstairs down the way from us who did these huge panels yeah. of, um, like models, women. Oh yeah. And I really thought I'll, I'll get like, I want to talk to her about like maybe a, a something for my daughter or, you know, just something. Son. So I went and was talking to her and um, she was like, so I was wanting to talk to you about your artwork. And she's like, oh, well, you can't afford it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and I was like, like <laughs> what? And she goes, well, I'm like, you know, 1200 square inch or something. And I'm like, well, well do you sell anything? She's like, well, I have it in galleries. So that's not an answer. So like she just like totally blew me off and like, I don't know. It's just a weird conversation. And I was just like, okay, so how does that work? (laughs) So when Julie and I got together, I don't remember what year it was, but um, I'd started selling my art and probably about 2004, 2005. And I followed the direction that my art instructor told me to do. He's like, go out, find somebody that's comparable to what you do, look at their prices. And back then there wasn't like all this stuff on the internet. Um, And I mean, there was stuff on the internet, but nothing like now. And so I would have to go to art shows and I went to galleries. And what I saw was like, there was such a wide range. And same thing now It's such a wide range because Some people are comfortable. Some people aren't. Some people think one medium is better over the other. Some people think that your location is better than another location. So they charge differently based on all these, you know, variables that don't necessarily make sense in in a normal, like retail environment. You know, if I go buy a pair of jeans, it's going to be same price in Atlanta as it's going to be here in Huntsville. It's jeans. But so he had me go around and look at everybody else's. I came up with a price, which like at that point, it was like an eight by 10 was a hundred dollars. Okay. And that's where I started. And, but then what had happened was some people go, Oh, a hundred dollars, no big deal. And then other people would go, well, that's, that's too expensive. You're, <laughs> and, and it was one of those things like, because I was comparing myself to in the beginning to everybody else else's price. I immediately had that imposter syndrome. Yeah. And so sometimes I would go like, okay, well, what do you think is a fair price? And then, you know, most of the times they wouldn't say anything. <laughs> like, oh, well, I don't know. Like, well, clearly you do because you think I'm overpriced. And I would just be rude because I didn't have 
I had a job at that point. Like, so this was me trying to figure out things. Hmm. So anyway, that was 24, 10 years later, 12 years later, Julie and I got together. And at this point I had a very complex spreadsheet. <laughs> I remember that spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> very complex spreadsheet because somebody told me I needed to charge per square inch. And so you take the square inch formula is basically you take your cost of materials times some variable, which is your square inch to equal a what you should charge. Right. So mathematically, there's two variables there, the amount you should charge, which you're trying to figure out, and the cost per square inch. So I was like, well, how do I figure out the cost per square inch? Oh, you just kind of figure out what you want for the end price. Okay, so eight by 10, $100. Now I got to figure out what's in the square inch price. So we figured that out. And then like if you go from an eight by 10 to a 16 by 20, the amount actually doubles that you would charge. Well, actually it quadruples. It, it's like four times the amount, which doesn't make any sense. No. So, and Julie and I were going through the spreadsheet and I was like, yeah, that's where they said to like scale down per square inch as you go up in scale of the, the area. Yeah. area. And she was like, by what? And I went, I don't know. I just kind of put something in there. I remember walking away from that and being like, <laughs> this, this made no sense. Like, I know we, I, we both walked away from it going, this didn't make any sense. Right. Yeah. Like I, I can't, I can't price that way. Like that doesn't make any sense to me. I need some logic here. <laughs> and I'm so all about emotion. Lady, don't get me wrong, but. This is why that lady's stuff was so expensive. Well, yeah. And it, it, cause it's, it, it's attempting to follow a logic, but here's what I found. So after Julie and I walked away from that meeting going, this doesn't make any sense. And why have they been doing it this whole time? And why am I just accepting this and moving on? Sorry, and I put you down that rabbit hole. <laughs> it was a great rabbit hole because I think it was like a year of me trying to figure out a better solution that was fact-based. And because what I found out is that that whole square inch model that was derived by a gallery. Mm -hmm. The gallery gave direction to the artist to um, price per square inch. And the reason why they did that is because that's what the gallery has. They have limited wall space and your piece is going to take up that wall space and they have rent, overhead, insurance, all the stuff to account for. Yeah. So they were the ones I was telling you. And if you think about like, okay, if I were to use that formula, the gallery is going to get 50%. Uh, there's no way I can make a living from this. Right. So, <laughs> so that's kind of where all of that kind of started with the square inch and where I started developing a different pricing model. Um, because I wanted one to remove the location stigma, you know, if I'm in New York versus Atlanta or versus Huntsville, Alabama, with the invention of the internet, it doesn't matter where I reside. Right. I should charge the same amount. Yep. Um, and then I started, you know, looking at all those years, I would do <clears throat> things on the internet about, you know, um, like black artists, not making as much as white artists. Well, who the frick cares whether they're black or white? Right. It doesn't matter. Art is a skill set. And then exactly. I was saying thing about like sexual orientation. Why would somebody get higher than the other? It did, men versus women. Women are underpaid. Why? And it all became down to because that individual felt they either deserve more or deserve less. Yeah. And so when I started putting together this formula, I wanted to remove all that diversity consideration. I wanted to be an inclusive, logical formula because math doesn't lie. You know what I mean? So you came up with this art pricing calculator and you can get it at artpricingcalculator.com, <laughs> yeah. and which is very fabulous. Um, and it works like a charm yeah yes 
like you said, it takes all of the confusion out. It it takes into consideration logical reasonings like your ability, the time, your materials, like any other business would do to price something out. Um, so that's one reason why I love it so much. And yeah. I think it's important though that you know artists be honest with you, you know, honest with each other and like you say, try not to undercut your fellow artists by going, ah, yeah, 50 bucks, fine with me, you know, yeah. or whatever. Like really either price yourself accordingly or, you know. Yeah, and the thing is that one of the my many reasons for creating this book was to not only get a formula out there that makes sense, but to also bring to light and hopefully remove all the negative things that are going on as it relates to pricing. You know, the the stereotypes with pricing, that should go away. Uh, It doesn't make any sense. You know, um, these scenarios where there's um, money laundering going on with art, that doesn't make any sense. It should be annihilated. But, um, and a lot of that is right now not in our control, but if we can all agree on a singular formula and stick with it, then regulations <laughs> might better affect, you know, companies like the, the big auction houses that are now taking NFTs and are keeping the buyer and the seller secret so that they can conduct money laundering using somebody's art. Yeah, And I know some artists are like, well, you know, I don't care what they do with my art as long as I get paid. You should, Mm -hmm. because that's affecting you. Do you think it's fair that somebody who threw paint on a panel who is 16 years old and has created equivalent art of somebody else who's, you know, 30 something years old, has been in the industry for 20 years, has all this experience, but because one is gay gets more money than the other one. That's not right. No. And that's what I want to get rid of. Yeah. I think your book is going Yeah. And I think your book is going to address a lot of this. And I hope it's eye-opening for others to read it as well. And um we're on your we're on your list, right? Because yes, yes. So, so once I, um, I'm wanting a, I'm wanting an autograph one. Well, I think you are on my, uh, what is it? My pre-launch team. So, <laughs> so I, did. I can't awesome. tell you how excited I am on this one. So, God, this has been a long, this has been a long journey, hasn't it, Julie? It, yeah, we've been talking about this for a long time, and, and I'm so it, excited to see it coming to reality. Yeah, you guys yeah. are making me nervous because this is like the first public conversation I think I've had about it. <laughs> well, well and, you yeah. know, I've had it tested say, by a number of artists, so I mean. Yeah, well, and I love it, too, because it applies to so much more than just art on a panel. Right. I, mean, mm-hmm. I used it for some mural work I did. I mean, yes. there's just lots of reasons to use it. Um, but yeah, you know, even- you said something earlier about um, uh, experience and sharing the process, and I think that's something that people need to really think about: is think about all the steps that it takes to do something. Um, Stephanie and I had a conversation not long ago about um, collections Mm -hmm. and she shared her project plan with me. And I know there's a lot of steps that go into planning a collection. Oh, my gosh, the amount of planning and the amount of things you have to do. The actual creation of the artwork is this small little two percent of the a hundred percent of the tasks, right? And, you know, everything else going into it is the financial aspects, the marketing aspects, the planning aspects, getting the materials, um, you know, doing the sketches, but the actual painting part is such a small portion of that overall work that that's where I think so many artists forget 
to include that in their pricing. Yeah, that's an excellent point. I, I read um, somewhere that 50% of your work is just creating the work. If you stop there, you failed. If you yeah. don't go forth and do the remaining 50%, which is the promotion, you're going to lose out. So you right. have to be 100% in just the creation, it's 50%. Yeah. Wow. That's a big mic drop right there, girl. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad we actually got to talk about this. Uh, Julie and I are so excited for you. And it's really, you know, going to be so cool and helpful to a lot of artists this year. So I hope so. We're excited. So let us know what you guys are thinking and how you're feeling about pricing your art and where you stand with that. And Um, Do you agree with us, disagree with us? And if you disagree with us, don't let us know. (laughs) I'm sure I want to know, but like explain why, you know, in a nice Uh, way. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to get ugly, but I, you know, in a debatable way, why do you disagree? Because there may be a point that we've never thought of. Yeah, exactly. there's always perspectives coming everywhere. And I, yeah. I try and take that into account with this book. And that's why I, I'm on like my probably 15th revision just to ensure, one, I don't want to tick anybody off. Two, I don't want to exclude anybody. <laughs> and three, <laughs> I want you to actually do it. You know, um, it, it doesn't it doesn't make a difference if it's not done. Right. And I think we're all here to make, leave something better in this world for the next generation of artists. So, yeah. Yeah. Agree. Well, you've taken a huge step in that, Stephanie. So oh. for Jules and I, we both thank you very much. So. Well, it's Julie's fault. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if you have any problems with that, it's Julie's fault. <laughs> Sorry. So you guys let us know really what, what you're thinking about. And, um, you know, what are your thoughts on this? And we hope to hear from you soon. Until next time. Thanks for listening to Artists Soar. A podcast for artists by artists. And if you have any questions, feel free to email us at hello at artistsoar.com. And be sure to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts so that you can get more of us and we can bring in some sponsors to help you and help us.